Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Jessica. I bring in the high vibrational guides known as Abraham. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about light bodies, but rather this transition into the light body. Abraham has talked about how the light bodies are not really in effect right now. This is more of a long-term thing. Um, as we go further in our spiritual evolution and um, ascension within our own bodies. But right now, what they want to focus on is this transition into more of a higher frequency body that aligns more with 5D energy and 5D new earth. So let's get right into it. Um, Abraham first starts off by saying that we have spoken previously about acclimating to new earth 5D energy and frequency. To go from the hot tub into the cold pool is a shock to the body, as is vice versa. You have to dip your toes in and slowly submerge your body one layer at a time and acclimate to the new temperature. Your physical bodies, in the transition between 3D into a higher dimension of 5D, is similar to acclimating your body from the hot tub into the cold pool or vice versa. In this acclimation process of shifting from one dimension to the next, your physical body has to go through these physical changes in order to fully make the shift, acclimation, and adjustment. This is all part of the ascension process. Jessica was speaking to a friend the other day who has been retrieving their lost knowledge without even realizing it. Through visions and wisdom and knowing and dreams, this person has been recalling lost knowledge mixed with higher dimensional wisdom from galactic families, mixed with source knowledge itself. This person mentioned changes in the body, physical changes, shifting of matter, physical matter, such as shifting of organs and bone structure and placement, and how the body is armored in order to shift the body into a more ascended body. And this is just the very first stage in the evolution of the body. The shifts in the physical body parallel the shifts in the consciousness of the human being. They go hand in hand. Many are aware of and have noticed these physical shifts in the body due to what you would call the Mandela effect. For example, changes in the placement of your heart, your rib cage, the shoulders, the spine, the organs. And in addition to these changes, there are changes in the cell structure, the blood, the DNA, the structure of your mind, the skin, the eyesight, perception, and the rest of the senses, even breath, and so much more. These changes are happening slowly, acclimating to the increase of energy and frequency in the body, acclimating to the increase of consciousness and awareness in the body. All of these go hand in hand so as not to create a, quote, shock in the body. It is all part of the ascension process. You are shifting into a higher vibrational state of being, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, energetically. But for today's transmission, we wish to speak about what is going on with your physical body and how the shifts around you are not only external, they are internal as well. Your physical bodies have to match the higher vibration of 5D for you to be able to coexist physically with 5D. For many of you, your energy bodies and your awareness has expanded into 5D, but your physical bodies are very much still in 3D. Many of you will be able to take your physical body with you into the new earth when the full transition and, quote, breakaway shift from 3D happens. You are not going to another physical planet. You are shifting where you are. You are shifting right now. It is your reality. It is your consciousness, your awareness, your perception of the world around you that is shifting from 3D into 5D. But at the same time, to make that quantum leap per se, in quotes, your body also has to make that leap with you. Thus, the transition from 3D into 5D, more higher vibrational bodies has to happen. Yes, you are integrating more of a light body. 
but your full light body will not take place for many, many years as you continue to evolve into your 5D experience and beyond. For now, you are mostly just integrating a higher frequency physical body in order to match the higher frequency state of 5D New Earth. Part of the movement and shift into a higher frequency physical body and ultimately into a more evolved light body involves the shift from dense energetic cellular structure and DNA structures into more crystalline energetic cellular and DNA structures. Okay, so I asked, you know, what are crystalline structures exactly? Because you hear a lot of people talking about this new crystalline body. And so I'm like, what is the crystalline body exactly? What does that mean? And so I saw this vision of water crystals in the findings of Dr. Masaru Emoto. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the work of the water experiments done by Dr. Emoto, um, I'm going to add a link to his work below. But basically he found that water structure is literally affected by the energy of any emotion or frequency directed at it. So he separated water into a hundred or so petri dishes and applied different frequencies and emotions to each dish of water, negative and positive. Then um, they froze the water and the frozen crystals from the water were studied. They found that the water that was subjected to positive higher frequency emotions and energy created these beautiful, symmetric, classic water crystal shapes with beautiful details and they found that the water that was subjected to these lower negative frequency emotions and energy actually created these ugly distorted water crystals that were just not pretty and um So Dr. Emoto found that human consciousness has an effect on the molecular structure of water, ultimately translating into this idea that thoughts and feelings have a direct influence on the physical reality that we experience around and within us. So our bodies are made up of mostly water. So the thoughts feelings, energy, and frequency that we hold and perceive and feel and surround ourselves with have a huge impact on our physical bodies, our health, as well as the physical reality that we perceive and experience around us. In a way, it's the overall well-being of your entire existence, right? It's your inner health and the health of your external environment as well. So now going back to the whole crystalline structure in the bodies, when I asked what these crystalline structures in our body really is, I was shown the water crystals of Dr. Emoto's experiment, right? So in terms of 3D bodies, I saw 3D bodies as kind of having these distorted, ugly water crystals in regards to the cellular structure and the DNA and where they're at currently. And then I saw, as we moved into 5D bodies and light bodies, I saw the structure of these crystals, these water crystals, um, shifting into these more beautiful, symmetric, detailed water crystals of higher vibration. What came through was that there are untapped resources within your cellular structure and DNA, as well as your organs, your blood, your breath, and other parts of your body that are not being used to the extent in which it could be. Just like how you are not even nearly using 20% of your brain, there are quote sleepy or distorted aspects of your cellular structure and DNA, as well as other parts of your body, that in this ascension process and shifting into higher frequency crystalline light bodies will begin to activate and come back to life in the way that helps you to navigate a higher frequency body with access to more of these, quote, special uses of the body as well. So Abraham wants you to know that the light bodies, again, are not in effect yet. They're showing me that the light bodies come at the dinner stage, and we're very much still in the breakfast and lunch stages, or maybe even the breakfast shifting into lunch stages. They're saying that 
the knowledge of light bodies are not as important as understanding the shift from your 3D physical body into a higher frequency body, and then ultimately to a light body down the line. The shift is what is important to know right now, and this includes all of the ascension symptoms that many people are experiencing right now and have been experiencing for quite some time. They say opening stronger energy in the body involves immense changes to the body. I asked them to explain some of these ascension symptoms and shifts, and this is what came through. In the ascension body shift, your body will begin to open lost inverted cellular structures, meaning cells are inverted in the 3D body. And by inverted, they mean that the cells are strengthened by the blood more than the cells being a blood strengthener. Shifting into cellular structure that strengthens the blood in the body will create a better body. Blood is hindered in some way right now, which causes the cellular structure to be hindered as well, because right now the blood affects the cells versus the cells affecting the blood. I'm not too sure, but that's what came through. Okay, and so then they said that the blood right now is premature. It's not mature blood in the body right now. In crystalline bodies, or higher frequency bodies, the blood is more mature, if you want to look at it that way. In this mature blood, in really being able to hold the higher frequency, blood is able very much to integrate and open knowledge of lost knowledge throughout the entire body. With the mature blood, the entire body is open to receiving this upgrade of lost knowledge awareness instead of just knowledge in the hearts and minds. Knowledge will be in the whole body, carried through the blood. And this goes back to one of my previous videos called Inner Lost Knowledge Part 3, I believe, where Abraham talks about that whole lost knowledge retrieval process and how it's that lost knowledge is carried through the blood and the cells and the DNA um, and the heart and the mind, that whole process. If you want to go back and watch that video if you haven't already or as kind of like a refresher. I then asked Abe to talk about the DNA, and they said, <laughs> where to begin with the DNA? The DNA over many, many, many generations has become stifled. I'm seeing, you know, um, how some house plants, when you don't water them for a long time, they become very limp and droopy, and they're kind of like, they look sad. And then when you water them, they immediately come back to life and they're strengthened. Right now, our DNA is limp and droopy and sad, basically. It hasn't been watered in a very long time. The DNA is the essence of your body and who you are as a physical being having this experience. You have fallen far from who you truly are. Not only contained in your DNA is your immediate ancestral lineage, but your DNA is the link to your soul memory. And they're showing me um, the DNA being compared to like a USB drive that you plug into the computer. The computer is the soul, the non-physical connected or plugged into source and the Akashic and all of that stuff, um, all of the stuff on the other side, the spirit side. And the USB is like the DNA. You have to tap into the DNA or the USB in order to access all the files on the computer. So right now we have access to some of the files, very, very little in the amount that I'm seeing in this like, you know, keep scrolling down the files and we're only access to like one or two of them. But um, there are many, many files on that USB that we're locked out of and we don't have access to it right now. And in activating the DNA through our ascension process, we are unlocking those files on that USB drive. The DNA is our connection to our soul, to source, to the Akashic, to everything on the, on the other side. But especially 
to our soul's memory, which include our past lives and any experience that we've ever had as a soul and as energy. This is important to the lost knowledge retrieval process, especially in the time that we're in right now, because activating that DNA activates those files that we need to access for our lost knowledge to come flowing through us and help us into the next stage of the ascension process and creating 5D new earth. Now, I don't know much about DNA, so I don't know how accurate this is, um, but this is what has been coming through for a really long time over the past few months. In terms of activating the DNA, I was told that we are moving into a 14 strand DNA, 1-4, and that's probably like light body time, like years and years ahead in the future. So, but basically we're activating more DNA strands than the 3D body, I think only has two DNA strands. So we're incorporating more DNA strands. And that's part of this activating of a higher frequency body and then ultimately the light body. And I'm being shown how it's um, like kind of like the spinning process. It's just a very slow spinning of the DNA. And then it's going to start to rapidly spin faster and faster and faster and faster. And part of that acceleration of the DNA is incorporating more strands into the DNA. They go on to now talk about the mind. Um, they say that the mind is a tricky one to navigate as well. Your current 3D bodies are these limp, lifeless plants with no idea of what you are fully capable of when full of life, full of nutrients, sunlight, and potential running through your veins. Your mind is like the roots to these very, very limp plants. It is through the roots that you absorb the water that will bring the plant back to life. There are other things such as sunlight, etc. that are involved that are helping to bring the plant back to life. And this can be compared to other things that are incorporated into the ascension and raising of consciousness in the physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional bodies. But in terms of the mind, it is the network for your entire body. So as the roots of the plant can absorb the water, the entire plant is therefore affected. If you think about a plant that exists connected to the ground, the roots have that access and relationship to Mother Gaia, pulling up the energy of Gaia into the plant itself. This is the same for your mind. You have access to the soul and to source and to everything in the spirit world represented by Gaia for the plant. And you can pull that into your physical ex existence just as that plant can pull Gaia, the entire earth, into the existence of this plant. And I'm so sorry for all the analogies, but obviously you know by now that Abraham loves speaking to me in these analogies, giving me these visions to interpret exactly what they want me to grasp. So I'm seeing the plant in the earth right now and very similar to our 3D physical bodies. The plant is only aware of the dirt and the bugs right around it, you know, in that very small radius of maybe like a foot around either side of it. That's what the plant is aware of right now. And that can be compared to our physical bodies and what many people are only aware of at this moment in time as well. You know, they're very close-minded, very in their own world. And what the plant does not realize is that it is connected to the entire Mother Gaia planet Earth. And how huge is that for this small little tiny plant that has no idea that it's connected to this huge planet? It can literally pull up information from the depths of Gaia. And I see this plant like being able to access literally entire Earth pulling up into the little being of what that plant is. Um, and it has no idea. So this is how we are as physical beings. We don't realize that in our hearts and minds, they are connected. They are the roots to this larger non-physical aspect that contains source and our greater soul and galactic beings and everything in between. 
Abraham is now bringing in the heart as connected to the mind. So when thinking of our expanding, ascending, higher frequency bodies, the mind will begin to open to the idea that we are connected to this much greater aspect of essentially ourselves, but also of everything around us. But in order to do so, the mind has to connect to the heart to get to that level of awareness. In this higher frequency body, the heart has actually shifted to be the roots or the mind of the body. And the brain mind will communicate with the heart mind to access this larger and greater part of us in both the non-physical and physical realms. So this is the ascension of the brain mind. And in that ascension process, it actually connects to the heart mind to make up our roots, to connect to everything around us in the physical and non-physical. They're also bringing forward information that I came across years ago when I was looking into the whole Mandela effect thing and the changes in the body, like I mentioned. And one of these changes was the heart. And you know, before people thought that the heart was located on the left side of the chest. Honestly, I don't know if it was ever located in the left chest. I don't know. But um, right now, your heart is located in the center of your chest for a reason to be the center the heart center and new mind center or your heart mind center it is aligned now straight to the brain mind also um the brain being in the area of the crown and the third eye chakras um i'm sorry for all the tangents that they're taking me on but right now they're showing me the brain mind shifting as part of the ascension process, um, connecting to the heart mind, but also the brain mind shifting to encompass more of the crown and the third eye chakras. So the brain mind lifts into using more of the third eye and opening up using the crown chakra energy. The brain becomes the receiver through the crown chakra, like an antenna. The brain mind merges with the crown chakra and the third eye chakra to become the antenna for the physical body to receive information from the non-physical realm and soul of the body. So the new brain mind receives like an antenna and the new heart mind integrates what is received into the whole body. This is the new ascended higher frequency heart and mind connection, which lifts our physical body up into the higher chakras. In 3D reality, we very much operate more within the lower chakras. In the 5D reality, the lower chakras are not as prominent. And I almost see like a merging of the lower chakras into just kind of one lower chakra, in like a root chakra, but the root chakra also transforms into more of a Gaia connection chakra, where it's, it's the grounding into Mother Gaia, into a very much more spiritual and ascended connection with Gaia, not, not grounding in the fight or flight need to survive lower chakras. It's transforming and ascending into a grounding to connect with the earth, connect to Gaia in a way that we can experience the physical in connection with everything around us in the physical, very much like still grounded to the earth and still grounded to our bodies so that we're not like floating in space the whole time, but it's a new way of grounding to the earth in a more spiritual and ascended way. In the 5D higher frequency body, I can see that the higher chakras, the heart, throat, third eye, and crown being where, kind of like that's where we sit in our physical bodies and the chakra system. And from there, we only lift up higher. So we have even higher chakras above the crown chakra that many in the physical do not even um, really use or let alone know about. But we begin lifting into the higher chakras as our dominant chakra system. And I still see the solar plexus chakra as being connected to um, more of the lower, that new lower root chakra or the Gaia chakra is what's coming through. But um, the solar plexus kind of lifts also, it, it ascends into more about living with purpose, living with passion, 
through the connectivity to all things with its connection to the new root or the new Gaia chakra. So they say also that there's going to be a further ascension, integration, and evolution of the chakras as you continue your own physical evolution in the 5D higher frequency body and ultimately into your further light body. Okay, so next they want to talk about the organs and the shifting of organs. They said that we are sensing the organs shifting into higher frequency organs that work with the body, not against the body. In this process, there is a release of energy and toxins that does not serve the body, but has been stored in the body for quite some time. In this release and the attempt for the body to heal itself, many people are experiencing physical symptoms of varying degrees. Think of your body in connection to the shifts that Mother Gaia is going through. Your body is also going through these internal shifts, and the result is the physical manifestation of clearing and cleansing of the internal body. On the physical level, Gaia's internal shift is seen in the duality energy of humanity playing out. It is seen in the weather patterns. It is seen in the corruption that is surfacing that was once hidden. It's seen in all of these natural disasters. It's seen in very many varying degrees on the surface of the planet, even in ways that you would not even think would be connected to the internal shift of Gaia. But remember that all is connected. The same thing goes for your body. Jessica has been experiencing the physical shifts in her body since she began her more stronger awakening and ascension process over the past six years and more. And they're showing me that we're all experiencing the shifts in our bodies on, a, on an individual basis. With me, I've had these food sensitivities come back within the past six years or so since I began that stronger awakening process. And they're showing me that this has been a steady process of raising my physical body's frequency. Um, and, and so in that sense, it's like I've been steadily detoxing for over six plus years and like cleansing and releasing physically, um, internally, all of that heavier energy and integrating more internal healing over this extended period of time. I stopped consuming alcohol for the past two years. I don't consume any processed foods or sugar, um, except for like natural sugars every now and then, but I don't have a lot of sugar. I try to cook my own food as much as possible so that I know exactly what's going in the food. And I try to eat organic and fresh and healthy um, and food that's of higher frequency and vibration. And I know that that's impossible and not as easily accessible for many people on the planet. I, I know and sympathize with that. But this has been something that's been important to my own personal journey in my own healing journey, physically, um, internally, emotionally, energetically, and uh, raising the frequency of my own body. So this has been just a very individual thing. It might apply to you for others. You know, they don't have to incorporate all of that stuff in order to raise their frequency of their body. So it's very individual. Um, and also because of that, because I've been steadily detoxing and raising the frequency of my physical body, that is something that people may be going through, but for others, they may experience everything all at once. So it's not such a slow and steady process. It's more of like a hard hit, you know, everything all at once, because maybe that's what they're supposed to experience. The physical eating is only one aspect as well. There is the emotional energy that we've been holding on in our bodies for years, some of us since childhood, and that's just stuck energy that's being Right now, it's being internally stirred up in order to erupt so that it can be released. So a lot of emotional energy is being released. It can be released emotionally or even physically because a lot of our physical symptoms are often tied to emotional traumas or things that we've held inside for years and years and years, just building up in that dense energy. So all of this is connected. It's part of the shifts in the body 
organ shifts and the stuck energy in those organs detoxing, the emotional energy and the physical stuck energy, everything just releasing, erupting, physically manifesting, emotionally manifesting. And they're saying that ascension symptoms can include anything from feeling very tired to digestion issues, stomach pains, menstrual issues, headaches, flu-like symptoms, extended colds, body aches and pains, um, mucus, foggy or fuzzy memory, inflammation, skin eruptions um, or skin inflammation, weight gain, weight loss, sensitivity to light and sound and energies, changes in sleep patterns, ear aches, ringing in the ears, um, and just so much more. The list goes on and on in terms of these ascension symptoms. And of course, we don't suggest that you chalk every physical symptom up to these ascension symptoms. As a disclaimer, if you feel like you need to see a doctor, then we suggest you go and follow your gut. <laughs> Speaking of gut, many people are experiencing issues with their guts. Your gut is the epicenter of your immune and health and overall well-being as a physical person. And just as your heart is the epicenter of your entire body, um, energetically and spiritually and emotionally and physically, your gut is the epicenter of your immune system. In the ascended body, the immune system is hardwired into a more accurate and pinpointed immune system, meaning that it is shielded in some way. It's, it's like a warrior with shielding. So to shift from these frail beings who get sick whenever someone else is sick or whenever you just touch something that someone else has touched, your immune systems are very low in your, in your 3D frequency bodies. So to go from that into your higher frequency 5D bodies, um, there has to be a lot of shifting and healing involved in this gut area of your internal body. And this also coincides with the energy of the lower chakras being released. So everything again is connected. And um, I'm also sensing outside factors in terms of like geomagnetic, solar flares, stuff like that. Um, those things do definitely affect the physical bodies and the ascension of the physical bodies into higher vibrational bodies. So that is also something to take into consideration in terms of physical changes and ascension symptoms. At the moment, that's really what came through in terms of the uh, ascended body shift or shift into a higher frequency body and eventually into a light body down the line. And so I'll stop there for today's transmission and channeled message. I know that's a lot still to put into one video, um, but I hope it made sense in some way. And quickly to make one last note, I've been getting a lot of emails and requests for QHHT or BQH um, hypnosis sessions, past life sessions. I'm actually not taking any sessions right now. I might start up in the new year, but as of right now until maybe the end of the year, I'm kind of in this in-between period um, physically, but also very energetically. So Abraham has told me that this is really this time for me to hone this connection to higher frequency, as well as the connection to Abraham and channeling Abraham. Since moving out of New York City and being in this more open energy, open air, closer to nature, um, it's really been honing my channeling and receiving of information and also my physical healing. Um, everything has been shifting and so I've been very busy, but I do try to keep up with emails and messages in the comments as well as in the Facebook group but sometimes I just really don't have the time. I am thinking of ideas for the near future in terms of addressing questions and everything kind of all in one place. Maybe putting together something in terms of like small online group gatherings or lives or something. Um, but I'm still working on that and we'll see how things play out. I'm not really rushing anything. Um, but thank you so much for watching this video and contributing your messages and thoughts and knowledge that you have, very valuable things that you guys are sharing, and it's helping so many other people as well. So thank you so much again. Jessica and Abraham leave you in oneness and love. Until next time.